These next few weeks here at Sunday Morning, we're looking back at a few of our Sunday best. Stories we liked so much, we'd like to share them with you again. To begin, Faith Saley with some small wonders of the insect world who can teach some big lessons to the rest of us. When most people think about ants, if they think about them at all, ants are pests in the pantry or on a picnic. But here in Belize, the ant is the king of the jungle. They are constantly on the hunt, swarming under every rock and lurking in almost every flower. So how many different kinds of ant species do you think are in the Belizean rainforest? <laughs> well, right around here, I mean, there could probably be several hundred. In the tops of the trees alone, there can be dozens. Oh, that's a howler monkey. Excuse vertebrates. Oh my god. <laughs> I thought we were on Lost. Esaton hamatum. Mark Moffat. An army ant. Is a biologist. Inside there, we have the queen and her brood. Author, photographer. Uh, the oh queen my. there, that's her head and abdomen. And ant enthusiast. Oh, Ooh. yes. Almost from birth. I learned early that ants are controlling the world under our feet. Down there as an infant, I would watch them doing all these things that were very human-like, building roads, working together to collect food. Ants do all kinds of things that even primates like a chimpanzee don't have to deal with. Take the leafcutter ant. These insects live in societies of millions. You can actually hear them. You get to know their sound. It's the motion of tiny little leaves. And feeding all those millions of mandibles requires a lot of work. This is a, a tough job, and their jaws get quite worn down by it. Their jaws, however, contain a lot of zinc, so they're essentially living can openers that can uh, grab onto the leaf from one side, tear through with that other tooth on the other side, the way you use a little uh, portable can opener. A lot of these ants are carrying leaves with hitchhikers on them. That's right, and this was a, something that early explorers even pointed out. Why are these little ants climbing on top of the leaves and getting hauled along? Well, one reason is it probably costs the colony less energy for them to stand on the leaves and to walk themselves. So this is just good economics. Carpooling. Carpooling it is. These leaf cutters are carrying their booty back to the colony, but they're not going to eat the leaves. No, they don't actually eat these leaves, and you would think they would, because they're carrying literally pound after pound of leaf down this tree, but they actually turn them into a mulch on which they raise a fungus. They are fungus-eating ants. They're totally farmers. They are entirely farmers. In fact, they do everything you think human farmers do. With behavior this complicated, they must be pretty smart, right? Ants are not smart. In fact, if you watch an ant for any length of time, you're going to end up wanting to help it because ants are really very inept. What's amazing about ants is that in the aggregate, all of these inept creatures accomplish amazing feats as colonies. And according to Deborah Gordon, professor of biology at Stanford, they do it all without a boss. In an ant colony, there's nobody in charge. There are no bureaucrats. There are no foremen. There's there are no managers. There's nobody telling anybody what to do. We put a lot of effort into thinking through how to organize some of the things that we try to do as groups. Ants don't put in any effort at all. They're pretty messy about it, and it works really well. Most ants, it turns out, simply follow the crowd. And now it turns out scientists are following ants to attack one of life's most frustrating experiences, air travel. So Southwest Airlines said, help us figure out the most efficient way to get our passengers on a plane. Right. And you said, I know, I'll use ants. Because I know they do complicated things with simple rules. Doug Lawson was a systems analyst at Southwest Airlines for some 20 years. Well, we discovered that there is a better order in taking your seat. 
Lawson used computer simulated ants to determine the most efficient way of boarding a plane, which turns out to be open seating. Southwest way of boarding without seat numbers is actually more efficient than when I board yeah. another airline and know exactly what my seat is? Right, when we simulated what the different airlines are doing, it turns out with uh, a signed seat, there's a one third chance that you're gonna ask two people to get up. Whereas open seating, since the middle seat is the undesirable one, generally that's the one that's last to be filled, which means only one person is likely to get up, the person sitting near the aisle. Did these ants have carry-on baggage? Were these ants cranky? <laughs> How did you account? Well, we, <laughs> yeah, we left out bad behavior. <laughs> so ants may not be smart, but they can be efficient. Something to ponder while waiting in the airport security line. Arguably, humans are too smart for the functioning of the whole society. It pays to be individually stupid. This is the wisdom of the crowds idea. Basically, all those little ants with their mostly ignorant choices, out of all of that emerges smart society. All of which is to say, the lowly ant is actually pretty impressive.